Good morning, saints. I greet you once again in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the triune head of God. But here again, it's all under one control, and that's God himself. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continuously and consistently be in my mouth. But this is a day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. So regardless of how you feel, what's going on in your life right now, it is good to be here. Remember, Jesus told us to bring all of our cares unto him. So whatever it is that's going on in, in your life, take it to the Lord and leave it there and leave it there. God will take care of it. Have mercy. I thank each of you for taking the time uh, this morning to meet with us again in this particular format. Uh, again, you hear me say the building is closed, but the church is still rolling on. And we thank God for the word. Have mercy, Lord, because it is in the word that we find everything that we need to make it in this life. And I pray and trust that uh, the Lord has met all of your needs this past week at home as well. Whatever that need was, that the Lord supplied it. Have mercy, Lord. And it's, a, it's, it's good to, to, to know that you're there once again and all is well in spite of what's going on in the world today. Please don't forget to put God first and foremost in your life. We thank you now. Let us pray. Our Father, we come now. And Lord, we're just so grateful to you once again for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. We thank you, Lord, that things are as well as it is right now with each of us and our families, God, with our neighbor and our neighbor's children, so, Lord, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would help us to not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of our minds. Open up our minds and our hearts, God. Give us purpose right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you now. We thank you for the blessing in the house today. And Lord, we know that uh, the word is going to be a blessing to, to someone today, Lord. We ask that you would continue to bless us individually and bless us collectively. And Lord, when it come our time to give, Father, let us do it cheerfully. Have mercy, Lord, knowing that you are the all-time provider and supplier. You are the rewarder. Bless us now indeed, and it is in Christ Jesus' name, Lord, we do pray. Amen. And again, we are just so grateful to come to you in this particular way. Uh, we, we love what the Lord is doing because he is in control, total control. So we trust him this morning. Uh, there is a word that comes from the Lord today, and it will be coming out of the book of Hebrews, Hebrews, the 12th chapter, and beginning at verse 1. Hebrews 12 and 1, you will find these words. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse 3, for consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied 
and faint in your minds. The word of God for the people of God. And we thank him for that. Uh, I thank the Holy Spirit once again who has provided us with a theme or a topic uh, to go along with the focal verses this morning that will hopefully give them a little bit more clarity and understanding that as the seed go out, and remember the seed is always good because it's the word of God, that it would find a place in our hearts and that we will allow that seed to manifest itself and that our lives may be transformed right before our eyes. And not only that, but that we may live a life that may be pleasing unto the Lord for the rest of our lives. So for just a few minutes this morning, I want to speak with you on this subject, a life focused on Christ, a life focused on Christ. Now, you may ask the question, with all the things that are going on in the world today, and the, the pandemic seems to be at the top of the list, along with all of the confusion that's happening in Washington uh, right now. Can I really live a life? Can I really, with all of that going on, can I really focus a life on Jesus Christ? Have mercy, Lord. And that is a resounding yes. Yes, you can. So let's see what the scriptures says about that and how I can go about doing that. Have mercy, Lord. A life focus on Christ. Now, as we examine this passage of scripture, we find that a life of strong faith does not happen automatically. Strong faith in a life, it does not happen automatically or without any effort on our part. Have mercy, Lord. So that means that there is something that we what, must do. Although it says we are not saved by our own endeavors, spiritual growth requires the appropriation of all the means all the means God has provided to help us walk faithfully with him. All the means, the word of God, that is the means by which we can walk faithfully with the Lord Jesus Christ. So yes, we can have a life focused on Christ, but we have to do it God's way. Have mercy, Lord. Now, in this walk, in this walk, there are some principles we need to apply to our lives. Number one, we can learn from the lives of past heroes of faith. Past heroes of faith, like those we read about in the book of Hebrews in the 11th chapter. Heroes such as Gideon and Barak and Samson and, and David and, and Samuel, all of these heroes and all of these heroes had one thing in common. One thing in common is that they trust the Lord Jesus Christ. And not only that, they found out that trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ will help you win battles. Have mercy, Lord. The, the battles that are going on in our lives, the, the, the circumstances, the situations, the dilemmas that, that we would consider battles, God will help you win those battles, but you got to trust him. Have mercy, Lord. And not only that, uh, they said that they received what God had promised them. God has made us a lot of promises in his word, and he's faithful with every one of them. Have mercy, Lord. 
and knowing that others have faithfully navigated the stormy sea of life, that is encouragement to us. That gives us the perseverance to hang on in there as well. Because if they did it, he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever that he'll do it for me too. But there is something that we must do. Trust God. Have mercy, Lord. And lean entirely on him. Second principle is to rid ourselves of any habitual sin or other burdens that hinder us from wholehearted devotion, commitment, and obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. Read it. The Apostle Paul says, I'm not going to let anything separate me from the love of God. Shake it off. Shake it off. And the third principle, the third principle, focus on Jesus, not on ourselves or our own desires. In the book of Matthew, Matthew 6 and 33, it tells us, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of its righteousness and all the other things God said that he will add unto us. So we got to put him first. We got to focus on him. We can live a life that is focused on Christ, but we got to do it God's way. Have mercy, Lord. And we need to understand that Christ had gone before us as a model. He set the standard how, how we're to live faithfully, regardless of the, the circumstances or the difficulties. He set the example. He demonstrated perfect trust, always doing exactly what his father commanded, even going to the cross. Have mercy, Lord. Jesus endured shame and suffering by focusing on the joy that would be his in the completed redemption of the people where God gets the glory. Listen, even when you're going through the trial, the test, the tribulation, James says to count it all joy while you are going through the problem. Jesus did. Jesus kept his mind on the joy, even going to the cross. We can keep our mind on the joy even when we're going through the problem. Have mercy, Lord, because we know when we come out of it, it is because of Christ. Have mercy, Lord. Take your eye off the problem and put it on Jesus. God, thank you this morning. So the question is, are you looking to Christ? Are you looking to Christ for the strength and the perspective needed to run life race? Not only run the race, but run it with faith-filled endurance. Faith-filled endurance. That even means even when you get tired, you're still running because the faith has kicked in. You know the reward is at the end. So you run on and see what that end is going to be. Now, when we look at the people mentioned in the book of Hebrews in chapter 11, the Bible says that they were not alone. And God has made us the same promise. The same promise. He said that he would never leave us or forsake us. So even when we're going through it, we're not alone. A lot, Jesus may be even carrying us. We're not alone, people. And their faithfulness is a consistent encouragement to us. When we look at the heroes in the Bible, we can bank on them because they made it. And they made it through the power and the help of God. And we can do the same thing today. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That gives me encouragement. Have mercy, Lord. And we need to understand that we do not struggle alone. 
We do not struggle alone. And we are not the first to struggle with problems in our lives. And we won't be the last unless Jesus decides to come back right now. If he comes back right now, then yes, we would be the last. But if not, then we will not be the last to struggle with problems. Have mercy. Others have run the race and, and won, and they are a witness to us. That, that, that stirs the spirit inside of me to stay in the race. Sure, you may trip. Sure, you may stumble. Sure, you may fall. But you keep your focus on Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. You see, the Christian life involves hard work. It's hard work. It requires us to give up whatever endangers our relationship with God. Shake it off, whatever it is. And it says to run patiently and to struggle against sin with the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Now, in order to live this life effectively, this life effectively, he says we must keep our eyes on Jesus. Keep our eyes on Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. And by keeping our eyes on him, we won't stumble when we look away. But when we look away, then that's when we stumble because we have changed our focus from him. And we put it back on ourselves or our circumstances and we stumble through the way. Remember Peter, when Peter stepped out on the water, he kept his eyes on Jesus. What made Peter sink when he looked away? He looked away and at that point he changed, his vision changed and he began to sink. Keep your eyes on the, on the problem solver. His name is Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. And remember, we are running a race that Christ has set before us. It's not our own. It's not our race. And we must always keep him in sight. Always. Now, how do we keep him in sight? We keep him in sight through reading the word of God, through prayer, and through meditation. That's how we keep him in sight. At all times. Have mercy, Lord. So, yes, we can live a life focused on Christ. You see, when we face hardship and discouragement, it is easy to lose sight of the big picture. But remember, we are not alone. You've heard me say that several times this morning. We are not alone. Help is on the way. Just call on the name of Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. And let us understand that many have already made it through life in doing far more difficult circumstances than we have ever experienced or could ever experience. So let us remember that suffering is the training ground for Christian maturity. Listen, nothing happens in our life unless God permit it. So the suffering is part of the training ground of Christian maturity. Christ wants us to grow. He wants to move us from where we are to where he knows that we should be or could be. Have mercy, Lord. And see, doing that, it develops our, our patience and it makes our final victory even more rewarding when we go through the suffering. In the book of, <clears throat> excuse me, in the book of Philippians 3 and 12, 3 and 12, you will find these words. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I'm apprehended of Christ Jesus. Now, when we look inside 
this particular verse. The Apostle Paul tells us that he has one mission, one goal in mind here, and that is to know Christ. He says everything else is secondary. My primary purpose is to know Christ. And that is our primary purpose is to know Christ. To know Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. And to be like Christ, he says, and to be all Christ has in mind for him. It is what we are the clay. Jesus is the potter. Romans 8 and 28 says, we know that all things work together for the good that love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. It is for Jesus' purpose. It is for what he has in mind for me. He knows what is best for me. That helps me to, to live a life that is focused on Christ when I accept what Christ has for me. Oh, I thank you this morning. Oh, bless you, Lord. He tells us that this goal absorbs. He says all of his energy. It just saps me because I want to give it all to Christ. For all that I am and all that I hope to be, we owe it all to him. Lord, help this morning. And this is an example for us today to understand that. And we should not let anything take our eyes off of our goal. And our goal is to know Jesus Christ above any and all things. Is to know Jesus Christ. Have mercy, Lord. And with the single-mindedness of an athlete. Paul used that as an illustration of an athlete in training here. He says that we must lay aside everything harmful. But not only that, he says, and forsake even the good things. We could understand, <clears throat> excuse me, laying aside the harmful things. But Paul says, forsake the good things, the good things that may distract us from being effective Christians. In other words, here again, Paul says, I'm I'm not going to let anything separate me from the love of God. And that should be our saying as well. I'm not going to let anything separate me from the love of Christ. Have mercy, Lord. And we're closing. We're closing. In the book of 2 Corinthians 3 and 18. 2 Corinthians 3 and 18, you will find these words. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as the Spirit of the Lord. Now, when, when, when the Apostle Paul talks about that in this particular verse here, he says that the glory that the Spirit imparts to the believer, he says, is greater. It is greater. He says, both in quality and longevity. He says, it's greater even that which Moses experienced. Have mercy, Lord. That lets me know that this is powerful. He said that it is the Holy Spirit that transformed the believer into Christ's likeness. See, when we were saved, we were endowed with the Holy Spirit. And it was put inside of us as a guide, as a counselor, as a compass to keep us on course. And, and every time that we read the word of God or, or we pray or, 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 or be in meditation with the Lord, we are fueling the spirit that is within us. And so when we are confronted with, with circumstances and, and issues and dilemmas, the Holy Spirit transforms. Ha! 
the Holy Spirit transformed that information that is inside of us to power and that enables us to go through whatever it is that we are confronted with. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. That helps us to have a life that is focused on Jesus Christ because we're keeping the vessel full of fuel to be used by the Holy Spirit. Whoa! That's what it does. God has made available. He has provided everything that we need to live a life focused on Him. We got everything we need. Lord, thank you this morning. So you see, it is the Holy Spirit alone, the Holy Spirit alone that can make us what we ought to be. What we ought to be. And this is done through faith. Remember, the Bible says without it, it is impossible to please God. So it is done through faith. I believe that Jesus Christ is who he said that he is. He's the son of the living God. And he can do all things. Have mercy, Lord. And it is done because of the finished work. We have that faith because of the finished work that Jesus did on the cross. Have mercy, Lord. That's what it takes. That's what it takes to have a life focused on Christ. And that life is available to each one of us today. Today, all we have to do is to apply ourselves to the Word of God. And remember, it doesn't happen automatically now. There's something that we got to do. We got to trust God for who He say that He is. And lay aside all that other stuff that, that so easily beset you. Have mercy, Lord. We can, even in a world that is full of chaos and corruption. Today, our lives can still be focused on Christ because greater, greater is He that is in us than what I see with my eyes. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. The doors of the church are open. You may come just as you are. Don't try to clean yourself up. Don't try to correct yourself. Just come with a willing and a humble spirit. And God will take care of the rest. Have mercy, Lord. And if you need help in understanding what salvation is all about and, and how to have a life that is focused on Christ, give me a call, please, ma'am, and please, sir. <coughs> Excuse me. 850-893-7000. Eight five zero eight nine three seven zero eight five. I will be delighted to sit with each of you and explain to you what salvation is all about and what we can do in spite of what's going on to have a life that is focused on Christ. Let us pray. Oh, eternal God, Lord, we come once again. And Father, we present ourselves as a living sacrifice. God, we are holy and acceptable unto you for your use and for your purpose. I have a desire, God, to live a life that is focused on you and you alone, Lord. But God, we understand that we can't do it by ourselves. We don't have the power, God, but we know you are all-powerful 
in the name of Jesus. So Lord, we ask right now that you would help us to not be conformed to this world, but help us, God, to transform our minds, that we keep our minds stayed on you, God. That, Lord, as we walk back and forth and to and fro in this earth with all of the confusion going on, God, that you would help us to keep focus on you, Lord. That you would help us to get our lives ready, God, for your coming back. Because the word says that you are coming back. And, Lord, I believe that today with every fiber in my body, God. And Lord, we want to be ready when you come. We thank you now for what you have done in this service. We thank you for the blessing that you have left in the house. Because when you show up, God, you are the blessing. Thank you for being in our midst, God. One more time, Lord, we love you. And we thank you so much, God, for first loving us. And Lord, we ask that you would keep us, keep us in your care, Lord. Have mercy, God. Continue to bless us. Show us favor now. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. And the Redeemer of the Lord said, Amen. We thank you once again for your presence this morning. And we pray that a word was said this morning that you can incorporate in your life. That from this moment on, your life will never ever be the same. Because you have committed yourself to a life that is focused on Christ. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. And we pray that God will show you his favor this coming week like you've never seen it before. And that throughout the rest of this day, that you will be covered in his grace and his mercy. And I want you all to always remember, always remember, I pray and trust that each of you have had a very happy and safe Thanksgiving. And, and we wish the, the safety upon each and every family during this holiday season. Christmas is right around the corner, as they say. So we continue to pray that all be well. That all be well in each of your households in the name of Jesus. Ah, thank you, Lord. And continue to focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. And always remember, always remember that God loved you. And so do I. Y'all be blessed. Amen.